April of last year, 2019, I started slurring, kind of like I am right now. Uh -huh. And I thought maybe I'd have a stroke or something. Oh my, well, I'd be all right. I, I didn't see any drooping or anything. So I just went to work and I didn't worry about it. And I was talking to Tracy uh, one day at work and uh, she couldn't understand me. And that was making me mad because she couldn't understand me. She get mad because I'm getting mad. And she's like, I'll call you back. She hung up, she called back a little later. She's like, you got a uh, appointment Friday. Find out what's wrong with you. I thought, okay, whatever. So go to the doctor, the doctor says, well, you probably have a brain tumor. I'm like, oh. My goodness. Well, that's great, you know, yeah. happy day. Hmm. So we go to a neurologist, they do an MRI, and uh, he, he's like, no, you don't have a brain tumor. I think you have ALS. I'm like, ALS. Which is Lou Gehrig's disease, okay. which rocked our world. We thought, yeah. that's a death sentence, you know, and mm. there's, no cure. there's no cure for that. So he says, I'm going to diagnose you with ALS until I can prove otherwise. Mm -hmm. So he did several tests on me over a series of weeks. And he's like, no, you don't have ALS. I think you got a brain tumor. So we go to a uh, neurosurgeon who looks at the MRI and he's like, mm, you don't need me. And he says, I, I think you got other issues and you need to go to see someone else because he said, I can't help you. Huh. So I thought, do I have cancer? He's like, I don't know for sure. Man. So we go to uh, ENT uh, surgeon and he takes the camera, runs it down my nose and we're looking on the video on the little TV monitor and uh, he's like, yeah, you've got cancer. Hmm. And that's about all he had to say. And so we go to the chemo doctors and the radiation. Well, at that point they scheduled to have biopsies done to see how far the cancer, you know, if it had spread. And they confirmed that it had spread into his lymph nodes hmm. and his neck. They did biopsies to determine and that's when they diagnosed it as a stage four cancer because mm -hmm. it had already spread into his lymph nodes. Yikes. So that was another shock. Yeah, so it a, started in his nose? It started at his... the base of his tongue. Oh, gotcha. And okay. uh, it caused his tongue to not be able to move right. Okay. He had a tumor at the base of his tongue. And, and then it, it, by the time, because we had been misdiagnosed, for a good six months, right, sent from doctor to doctor to doctor, that yeah. and yeah, had every time it's a three week yeah. wait, wait before you mm -hmm. can get in to mm -hmm. see and her. numerous tests. And later we were we would find out that the first MRI that we our CAT scan that he ever had showed it, mm -hmm. but it was misread. Mm -hmm. um, that it was such a fast growing cancer that by the time it was diagnosed as a cancer, it had already spread into his lump nodes. Gotcha. Mm. And so um, that's at the point where they sent us to a chemotherapy doctor and, and a treatment plan was put in place. Mm -hmm. But we were told that um, he would have to, because it was such an aggressive cancer and because it was already in his lump nodes, that, um, that surgery, he was non-operable that surgery, surgery to remove it was not an option and that he would, um, they would need to do so several rounds of, of chemo first yeah. to even see if it would make a difference. Yeah. So, um, he said he wanted to do at least three rounds of chemo before he, we even attempted radiation. So I asked him, I thought, so what are my chances? 
It's like, uh, I'm going to say 50-50. So, we do the first round of chemo, and at the time, it it didn't feel that bad. You know, the, you first get the, there's three different drugs that they're giving you. Um, whatever the first one was, I thought, well, that wasn't too bad. And the second one hit, and Tracy hit, she was sitting across from me, she was like, you're white as a ghost. Do you feel bad? And I was like, yeah, I really do. And I finished it, and then they hook a pump to you, to your port, and send you home for a week, and this little drug goes every 30 seconds pops into you just a little bit. At the end of the week, or that Friday, you go back and get the pump off. And I got up that morning and I went to take uh, one of the water pack things and poured it in and I couldn't even swallow. I just felt horrible. And we go to the doctor, get the pump off, see the doctor, he's like, how do you feel? I said, I feel terrible. You know, he said, well, you don't look good. Let me put you in the hospital for a few days and get you better. I said, I don't want to go. He's like, why not? I said, because I don't think I'll come out. Mm. And uh, we go to the hospital. They talk me into it. Go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And it just went downhill from there. Uh, this lady doctor came in and I'll never forget this. She reaches over and grabs my arm and squeezes it and her hand felt so good on my arm. And she's like, he's burning up. And I had a high fever and within a day or so, I don't remember what happens. I remember them sticking a tube down my nose and a few days later, I had a uh, feeding tube put in because I wasn't eating. And I basically just kind of thought, well, this is it. You know, I'm going to die here in the hospital. And uh, I mean, it, it, it was bad. And he, he had pretty much given up. He, he was in such pain at that point. And, um, it felt he felt so bad and the circumstances looked so bad mm -hmm. that he had pretty much given up yeah and um everyone everywhere was praying you know everyone was calling everybody who knew anybody to to pray you know please pray for jeff bates yeah and this particular morning jeff always liked to watch the 700 club and um since this, i couldn't start since i couldn't work I watched a lot of TV and the 700 Club came on about mid-morning sure. in, in Florida. So, And I got to watch it out and I was like, oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. And she's like, you want me to turn 700 Club on? I, I thought to myself, no, I don't want to hear it. I don't mm -hmm. want to, you know, I'm not interested in watching TV. And I shook my head, yeah. And she had had the impression uh, as I was moving the chair to get him, the nurse was helping me get him out of the bed to put him in the recliner that they have in a room. Mm -hmm. In an instant, my spirit man heard, he shall live and not die. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't even see the TV because it hung behind me. But they were praying on the 700 Club. And it was a woman, the woman's voice said, someone right now is laying in a hospital bed and you've given up and the Lord says ye shall live and not die. Mm. And I knew that that was for Jeff. Yes. And I said, you will not believe this, but I was thinking that exact thing. And the Lord is telling you, you shall live and not die. Mm. And he was so weak, I don't know that he really heard me or received it at that moment. Yeah, I didn't. But I knew that he would live and not die, and we, I called yeah. his mom, and um, we just all began to believe that he would live and not die. Yes. And so he came out of the hospital, 
Yeah. And after ten days, spending ten days in the hospital, he mm -hmm. began to regain his strength. We we started um, radiation therapy in conjunction with chemotherapy, which lasted for thirty-five treatments. Yeah, uh, every day he would have to go and have radiation done to his face. It it caused burns to his neck, mm -hmm. and um, still had sores in his mouth, but. Mm -hmm. You know, we just believed that he was going to live and not die. Mm -hmm. And at the end of treatment, they they told us it took, they had to wait three months before they would do a test because it, they have to give the medicine long enough to get out of to, to, sure. to finish working. And at the three month mark, they did a CT, and they called, and the doctor said, um, and I had already read the report because we would get it on our phone. But I wasn't sure of what I was reading, and he said, um, have you heard the news? And I said, well, I know what I read. And he said, there's no cancer. There's none in the lip nodes. There's Very none in his throat. There's, yes. no, there's no more cancer. Mm -hmm. And when he Very went serious. to the doctor, he could mm -hmm. tell him what he did. I was still having a little pain in the back of my, on the back of my tongue when I would eat something would rub and it would just irritate it and I, it, they sent me back to the first ENT surgeon uh, guy and I'm sitting in the chair waiting on him he comes walking in picks up the folder opens it up and he's working there he's like Jeffrey Bates I was like yes sir never expected to see you again mm. wow. and I, at first I thought well, I had an appointment. Yeah, right. <laughs> he didn't think you were going to survive. Yeah. And that's when I asked him, I said, so you thought I was going to die or something? He's like, honestly, yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought, wow. Yeah. But I said, well, get me I'm a walking mirror. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. and, uh, I'm walking that's awesome. Mirror. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, yeah, that's and, awesome. And they're Every still day. amazed. Mm -hmm. they, they are still amazed. They check him every three months, mm -hmm. and they're still amazed. They they can't, mm -hmm. in their medical minds, figure it out. And we just keep telling them, Jesus heals, and, right. and, and God healed him. His mm -hmm. one of his doctors is a Muslim doctor, who um, always uses the name God, mm -hmm. and he'll say he's told us since the beginning we're just gonna have to pray, we're just gonna have to pray. And we have told him since the beginning, we pray and we believe Jesus heals. Mm -hmm. And yeah. he keeps saying, thank God. Mm -hmm. But we know that he is not thanking the God that we thank. Right. Yes. And we keep telling him, <laughs> we, think, right we right praise right Jesus right. that yes. he's healed. Yes. Right. And um, so we tell everybody that we can. When, the, when you heard on the TV exactly what you felt in your spirit was mm -hmm. that he will live and not die. You still had 35 treatments to go through before you got to right. the process and then three months before you knew. Right, right. But, radiation treatments. And ongoing chemo. And, and, and they were expecting a lot of pain, so yes. they prescribed you. They, they gave me a big old bottle of 125 oxycodone. And I thought, oh Lord, this is gonna kill me. Yeah. And and they explained the reason they gave him that many pain pills in the beginning was because that when you go through radiation, it causes a burn from the inside out. Mm. That's how it cures the cancer. Mm -hmm. So that the, mm. the tumor would be, that's how it would burn or shrink the sure. tumor and that yeah. it would be very painful. They had said yeah. that head, neck, and mouth cancers, that this falls in that category, or some of the most painful cancers is what they were had yeah. told us. And so we kept waiting. So after the first two weeks, he went to the doctor and they asked him. Go see the, the radiation oncologist. And he's like, how you doing? I said, oh, I'm doing pretty good. Yeah. He said, any pain? No, not really. He said, well, how much medication you got left? I said, all of them. <laughs> and he's like, really? I said, yeah. Am I supposed to be taking them? He said, well, if you're not having me pain, you know, you don't need to take them. I said, okay. So 
I never took any. The whole time? You the never whole time. Any. Praise and the Lord. They would say, yeah. well, after the first two weeks, you know, is usually when the pain c yeah. kicks in. And we would go back the next, after another week of radiation, and he'd see him, and, well, have you started having pain yet? No, no. not having any pain. Wow. <laughs> Still doing good. By, awesome. by about the, you know, fourth week, they quit asking and never had any pain. That's amazing. And, and also, yeah. they said he would lose his taste buds and that he would not, you know, he may or may not recover his taste. Mm -hmm. And he temporarily lost the taste. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. sensation in his mouth yeah as soon as treatment was over all of his taste came back awesome. he has he hasn't lost any of his taste that's, awesome. that's and great Jeff, your teeth got real sore and they told mm -hmm. you a lot of people lose yes. teeth. yeah that was another symptom they said that um but due to the radiation you might have a lot of dental issues some people have to have all their teeth removed you have mm. to um get dentures wow you know a lot of problems with your teeth even in, with the jaw bones it's yeah. not uncommon you know jeff never had one cavity never had one problem no. went to a oh, dentist God. they said your teeth are fine never yeah, had any, any pain out of chance yeah <laughs> i mean it's just i'll be like, honest after after that much information it's like why do i really want to live anymore like that's yeah. some of the worst it, you're going to be in miserable pain mm -hmm. you're going to lose all your teeth yep you never be able to taste again. Yeah, they told but you. It's kind of like, do I, did, can you just shoot me now? I'm not yeah. saying that, but you know what right. I'm saying. It's that. Yeah. That's a tough that's situation. That's how he felt. And yeah. you could say that's why you would want to give up. I thought, is it even worth it? And so when he yeah. got yeah. sick the first time, that's why it hit him so hard because we had yeah. already discussed as a couple, yeah. neither one of us, there were certain things we didn't want yeah. as we get older, right. you know, to personal choices. Right. And that um, he didn't want to live that way. Sure. And so he, you know, didn't want it. He was afraid if he went to the hospital, he would forever be on a machine or on a, or not come out. Oh, sure. So when he did, that was a miracle. Yeah. And it, it's, it's yeah. been great. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That is pretty mm -hmm. terrible.